Hello YouTube. In this video I'm going to show you how to use IOMI Backupper to make backups of your Windows system. Now as you can see you have Backupper right here and Partition Assistant. We're just going to go to Freeware and we're going to get the IOMI Backupper standard. Click Save File. Now this is in Firefox so you can see the download is going to go up here once it's finished it'll turn into a blue arrow if you're using Chrome it'll come down here and you can just click on it when it's done and now that it's finished we'll click on the blue arrow click on backupper user account control comes up hit yes and you can close out the web page I will provide a link in the description for getting IOMI backupper once the installer starts, you can close out the web page, select your language, click OK, click Next, click I Accept Agreement, and then Next. You can leave it on the default or change where you want the program to install right here. Click Next, and then you can change the name of the program if you want to. Generally, it's best to leave it on default. Click Next, and then if you want a desktop icon, leave that selected. If you want a click, uh, quick launch icon, which is down here, you can click on that click next and then click install it's a pretty small program it's only a couple of hundred megabytes so it shouldn't take it very long to install at all once it's finished just click finish and now we're ready to run backupper so double click on IOMI backupper UAC will come up again which is user account control click yes and now we're gonna make a backup so we can do this one of two ways we can click backup or we can just leave it on home now as you can see you can also do a drive clone so we're going to do this both ways we're going to leave it on home click create new backup and you'll see that it takes you straight to backup or if you're on home just click on the backup anyway because i mean that's where it's going to take you now you can do a system backup a disk backup a partition backup a file backup or a file sync now you do a system backup it will only back up windows and create an image of the system partition that is actually a very very nice thing to have but at the same time mm, it may not be what you're going for most of the time this right here will work out just fine if you do a disk backup it'll back up the entire hard drive to an image file this is going to be the main one you're really going to want to focus on. Or if you're running dynamic volumes, you can do the partition backup, which backs up a partition or dynamic volumes. A file backup is something you're going to want to do for just some files and folders that you want to select to back up on a regular basis. And the file sync will back up folders to a synchronization without any image file so the main one that we're going to focus on here we're going to do a disk backup and right here step one select the disk you want to backup step two select another location as the destination path so we're going to do step one which is going to be disk zero step two we want to backup disk zero we're going to back it up to the E drive which is our backup folder you can also do backups over network and back them up to a network location all kinds of options if you click on backup options here you can see that you can enable email notifications you can enable encryption on the backups which is really nice you can write a comment for the backup operation the compression you can set the compression how you want it to be Splitting, you can split the files up into smaller sizes. So that way if you're going to put them on a CD, a DVD, you can do a FAT32 where it breaks it up into the maximum of uh, 4 gig files. There's the DVD drive and then of course the zip drive. You can do the intelligent sector, which only back up the U sectors of a system. This will reduce the size of an image file and backup time, or you can do an exact backup. You're best to use the intelligent sector backup. 
And then you have VSS, which is a backup technique, which is provided by Microsoft. It allows the program to backup data without interrupting operations in progress, which means you can run the backup in the background. And it won't really affect the system. You can sit there and still use the computer and do whatever you need to while it's performing that backup. So with the option set that you want, click OK. And then click Start Backup. Now, while it's doing the backup, you might want to tell it to check the backup or integrity on completion. This added little option, it will take a little longer, but at the same time, it also gives you the ability to verify that the backup is 100% and it's good. Since this is a demonstration, we're going to deselect that, but more than likely, you're going to want to leave that enabled as default. And you can also set it up to where on completion, it'll either shut down this PC, restart, hibernate, or sleep. And as you can see, the operation has completed successfully, and all you have to do is click Finish. We now have a backup. If you click Restore, you can restore that disk backup. One thing we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and click on this as though we're going to do the restore. So we go to Backup and there's our disk backup and there's the ADI image that it's looking for click open click next or select the full backup and then click next and then you're going to restore the disk to disk zero or you can do a partial or partition, select the partition and the image file to restore its original or other. We're going to select the disk, hit next, and then as you can see, you have the disk restore. Select the destination for the disk image you wish to restore. It's automatically going to highlight drive C, click next, and it'll start the process of doing a restore. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a clone. You can do several different clone types. You have the partition clone, just like with Iomi Partition Assistant. You have a system clone, and then you have the disk clone. System clone, this is used to clone or migrate your system to a solid state drive or other disk. For a partition clone, this clones one partition or volume from one to another. Then you have a disk clone, clone a hard drive to another. If the drives are different sizes, you're going to want to use partition clone, especially if you're going from one small drive to a bigger one. If the drives are exactly the same size, use disk clone. If you're migrating your system over to a different hard drive, you'll want to do system clone. In this particular case, since both drives are exactly the same size, I'm going to do a disk clone. All the processes work pretty close to the same, so we're going to select our source disk, which is the backup our destination disk which is backup 2 and then you can do a sector by sector align the partitions for op optimize for a solid state drive or you can just leave those selected and let it just do a straight up clone click start clone and you're on your way again on completion you can select that until it's shut down reboot sleep whatever you need to do so that way if you're setting this up to perform it while you're away or something like that or you're getting ready to go to work you want it to do this while you're gone and then shut down then you can fix it up to where it does just that. Especially if you're doing a drive upgrade and you want to pull that other drive out, then you can have it shut down to where when you get home, you pull the drive out, make sure the other one's still in, and boot it off of the drive. So it gives you a lot of really nice options and functions. See as how this is a pretty small setup, a pretty small copy over it's going to go pretty quick. Now, if this was a, a completely full 2 terabyte drive to a completely full 2 terabyte drive, yeah, this process would take forever. A lot of people would recommend that you do a backup once a week uh, unless you do a lot of uh, data processing and things like that. You'll probably be fine with once a month. If you do do a lot of data processing and things, then you may want to back up once a week, if not more frequent. 
And now as you can see, the disk clone is completed. Once that's done, just click finish. And we now have the backup. We now have a clone of the backup. And you can come down here to utilities. You can click on check image. And you can check the data integrity of a backup image. You can click create bootable media and create rescue media such as a CD, or DVD, or USB drive. Using the bootable media, you can set it up to where you can actually fix up a system where you can boot the computer and then load an image and be able to restore the computer that way, which is really nice and really, really fast. You can explore an image by mounting it and browsing what all's in it. You can export import configuration. You can do a pixie boot, load the microsystem on the network for system maintenance. Using the pixie boot, you can actually get it into where you can boot the system up like that. You can either do maintenance or you can force it to boot an image or various other aspects like that. And then, of course, you have view logs to be able to view the logger and see what's going on. IOMI, or IOMI Backup or Standard works very, very well. Uh, I highly recommend it for people. The backup itself works. The uh, bugs that older versions had with the network backup have been worked out. They work very, very well now. And it gives you a lot of really nice options, especially for doing uh, being able to boot the system and restore your uh, backup and get everything back up and going. This information is out there for absolutely everybody. As always, watch, like, and share. Have yourselves a great day.